Okay, uh, thank you all for coming. This is um, September 14th uh, Board of Trustees meeting. We're going to do a roll call, starting with Elaine on the computer. We start with you, Elaine. Oh, Elaine Breslow, present. Sarah Pease, present. Megan Brinsey, present. Brooke Jewell, present. Bob Sateri, present. Mary Gavonich, present. Great, thank you all for coming. Um, next, we will um, approve the minutes of the last meeting. Did everybody have a minute to uh, look over the minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. I move to approve. I second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay, great. I will pull up my director's report. Is that it? Those the two things? Oh, yeah, my, my report's quite slim as well. So I saw on one reading. page. That's yeah, pretty good. <laughs> it's rare for me, right? <laughs> no, but it, it, um, it was just concise. It's yeah. been very busy. I, we, we have been busy, yeah. And I don't recognize people now when I come in. Oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. we can pull up the org chart too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let me share my screen so we can see. Where did I go? All right. Elaine, can you see my report? Not, not just yet, no. Okay. But I, I can, I can open another screen and look at it that way. Oh, here we go. I can see it now. Great. Okay. Um. So we have been very busy at the library. Um. Our patronage has been a little bit slow in the month of August, um, but our projects are happening and getting finished uh, fast and furious. Um. A lot of the staff is working together on um, seeing improvements and, and making changes to make things streamlined, which I'm really excited about. So we have our seasoned staff working with our new staff. So we have a new perspective, but we also have the historical knowledge that we need to, to get things done properly. And so I'm seeing some really kind of really innovative thinking going on and some great teamwork. And just for an example, one of those things is Michael um, noticed that every time we were checking in our periodicals, there's a process before we put it into our database. And it was about 50 pages of, of paper every year that we were using to go through this process and everything was done by paper and checked off. And it was in a binder in the back. And so he's converted that process to um, online and he's put it on the cloud, he's put it on Google Drive and he's shared it out with the entire staff. So now if we're you know, looking to see if a certain magazine came in, we don't have to get up and go over the binder, we can just open up our file online and see if that magazine came in. Mm -hmm. um, so he's worked with Kristen and Bronwyn to get that done, which is great. Um, and so we're just seeing pro uh, progress like that, um, just, small things, but big things um, that are changing our workflow and saving paper and um, all that good stuff. So I'm excited that they feel empowered to, to start identifying those things and, yeah. and getting the work done to do that. Um, our heirs report statistics. Um, I'll open it so everyone can see. Um, so our all of our statistics are up which they should be because we were closed for a year and a half and we would hope that since now we've been open for an entire year that we have some really great statistics. But what's exciting about these statistics is not only are they back to normal, what we would see in like FY19, but we're actually doing better than what we did in FY19. So we've come back with a boom, if you will. Um, so our circulation statistics total was uh, 14,064 people. Um, in 2019, where we saw kind of more of a normal situation of in-person programming all the time, we had more like 12,200. So we're, we're getting more people to come in person to the library and come to our programming. Um, and, and when they come in person, are they doing computers? Are they browsing journals? Are they picking up books? What are they doing? Um, so they're coming to our, our program, mostly our children's program. 
uh, like like normal. Mm -hmm. Although I will make a nod to our adult programming as well is is doing better than it did in 2019 as well by about 100 people, which is great. Um, so we're excited that those numbers have gone up. Um, and then I can talk about material circulation, which I think will answer your question a little okay. bit better. <laughs> um, so again, we're back to statistics that we saw in 2016, but we're doing higher than that. So we circulated 162,269 items this year. Um, and those are, uh, include eBooks. Um, we're seeing a steady incline of new books, but not really um, of ebooks, um, but not really the explosion I was looking for. I assumed that during the pandemic, our ebook circulation was going to explode. And um, our print collection, of course, the circulation of that would go down. Um, and the circulation did go down for our print collection, but I didn't say there was an explosion of ebook checkouts. Um, it's still just kind of steadily climbing about um, 2,000. 3,000 more circs a year. Um, but we did hold on. To, another thing I was wondering is if since the pandemic's over, the ebooks would decline, mm -hmm. maybe, and that um, physical books would go up. So physical books went up and so did ebooks. So the people that were using ebooks during the pandemic continued to use ebooks. So they they liked what they was what they were using, which is a good sign for us and overdrive and hoopla and all those apps that we're keeping our, our customers, if you will, on those platforms. Well, I mean, maybe. Maggie, can I ask a quick question? What, what, yeah. what, what falls into the category of electronic content use? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, let me go back to that. Uh, let's see where we're at. Okay, so electronic content use is the difference between an ebook and electronic content is ebooks we select. So um, ebooks are from Overdrive because we actually do collection development to create that collection. Electronic content is Hoopla. And while it's also an ebook, Hoopla, we don't have any control over what they offer to us. So there's no collection development that goes on on our end. We expect that they have. And we know that they have a group of librarians that they use to develop their collection, but that's the difference between the two items. And it's it's odd, but <laughs> that's what it is. Wait, Thank you. Sorry, is there? I'll move this. Um, I'm just going to use that excuse for the next. It, that's totally fine. Um, so I thought Hoopla was, and again, Hoopla has been introduced to me by my daughter. Yeah. And I was under the impression that Hoopla was the digital collection. It's not a proprietary collection. It's actually a service that we that we can sign up for through our library with a library card. Audio and yes, and you can read your books. Yes, digitally. What's, so I didn't notice that thing existed. So are we talking? So the reason the numbers you haven't seen an, ex, an explosion in numbers is that it's an awareness issue, right? Could be. Could be. So Overdrive is our ebook platform. It's actually more popular than. Hoopla, uh, but that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, um, most people would say that Hoopla is easier to use. Yeah, I agree. Um, so Hoopla is a already curated collection that's given to us, and they have already negotiated with the publishers multiple licenses. So anything that's on Hoopla, um, we could have 15 people check out at once mm -hmm. because that's the arrangement that Hoopla has made with the publishers. I don't know how they did that, but they did. Oh my God. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no worries. Oh, Mary Lou, you were right. It was me on the phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I couldn't and then, promote you. you. Well, you can't be promoted. And well, once you said that, I hung up because you, you're uh, you're muted the whole time too if you call in, apparently. So I couldn't yeah, even tell no. you that I was <laughs> there. The line. Line. <laughs> so anyway, here I am. Um, so in with Overdrive, Overdrive is a curated collection by your local librarian, and each book only has one license. So if Mary Lou checks out the newest and best, you're on the waiting list, and there's no waiting list on Hoopla. So it's a more appealing mm -hmm. product in the sense that you can get whatever's in front of you right now. The thing that's not appealing about Hoopla is they tend to not have the best sellers right. because of that 
because they have so many licenses. They have a limited collection. I, this is just, I always had a question is, particularly on Hoopla, do we end up paying a certain amount for each time one of us downloads a Hoopla? Mm -hmm. What would it be like? So it's anywhere ball, ball between uh, it's anywhere between thirty five cents and two dollars, okay. depending on the title. All so, right. or if it's a movie or whatever it is. Right. Um, so it's not how that works. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of libraries limit how many checkouts you can mm -hmm. check out from Hoopla for budgeting purposes. Okay. We're not in a place quite yet that we need to do that, um, but we might someday as it becomes more popular, we might have to limit how many checkouts somebody gets in one month. Yeah. So everyone's still read books like like the feel of a book in the hand right mm -hmm. people still yeah, I, did. I, did. I did <laughs> most i would say loads of our patrons really prefer the books right? yeah i think it's at the point where whatever you can get your hands on faster so i i, mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of going to um, monday cafe at elder affairs mm -hmm. and um this past monday and so I got to talk to a lot of folks about ebooks versus, you know, paper books. And I was surprised a lot of folks were saying, you know, whatever I can get first is what my preference is. Um, so I thought that was really interesting, especially for, you know, bestsellers. If they're on overdrive and they know they're, you know, number 250 on a list, then they're going to go try to dabble um, at the library. And then if they're, you know, and then they might make their way to Bunwoods, you know, or maybe they go there first. But you know, it's whatever they can, whatever's first in front of them. Um, so I find that to be really interesting. There, there's no timeline to finishing a book in, like, sorry, in on a digital format. So if I do something on Hoopla, I can come back to it, start get started, and come back to it a few months later and finish it right over the it expire. You you get two weeks. Oh really? And, yeah, and then it expires. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> and same with overdrive. And so that's another frustration with overdrive is if you're not a fast reader like myself, you know, two weeks is not enough, no, you know, enough. and then if you're on a bestseller list, then you're going to go back to the bottom of the, the barrel and you're waiting for it again. So uh -huh. that's not appealing. That's actually one of the things we talked about at cafe is like how frustrating that is because you've waited so long and then you're, you're back at the bottom. You can all tell that I don't read right now. Like, right, like my life is <laughs> like I'm not reading read, at all. It's an I'm ebb sorry. and flow. But no, but, I, but I, I'm it interested. It will happen this, again. I yeah. So. But, I, but I'm interested because I, I feel like it's easier for me to just keep my entire world here and know yeah. that it's going with me. And I'm really, you know, that, that, but I don't love reading. I could read an article on my phone, but yeah. I love reading a book on my phone. It's not enjoyable. But. Well, and with print books, even though they, they are also due back in two weeks, like, we don't, maybe we don't bring them back and we're, you know, mm -hmm. finishing those last pages, yeah. but digitally it just takes it away. So you don't have that option of like, well, now we don't have fines at all. But um, when we did have fines, like, all right, I'll pay 10 cents a day to, to finish this up. And that's an option that you had. Um, so. The idea of cheating in the library is interesting to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> cheating by picking it out? Yeah, I mean, we all do like these small little things, right? Like, this is part of our DNA is that we always like, even when we were kids, we hold that book an extra couple of days and sometimes you just drop it off and you'd never pay your 25 cent fine or whatever it was. Right. And so it's like, there's like this little version of that going on. It's interesting. I don't, I don't know if you guys I'm have so that. guilty of that, I confess. Yeah, so me too. So I think we all, should, that's just something about, I think, it's right. interesting. Although well, the last time I had, I had two red hot reads this summer and that are supposed to like you're not supposed to be able to return and renew them you know yeah. but at the end of two weeks i gotta renew them <laughs> yeah. by, by email so i was like oh. yeah yeah that happens yeah 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 i was relieved i wasn't done so i wasn't bringing it back yeah yeah well we do try to do automatic <laughs> renewals yeah. because on no, our side right. for statistics yeah, exactly. we check the book out for us again so if you don't bring the book back out on time yeah. we get another checkout on our end huh. for our numbers so we're benefiting from the rebels that are keeping their books. See, I, 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 I'm always, I'm <laughs> always <laughs> thinking oh, about oh, oh, the library. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Elaine, can you hear us okay? I can. Yes, I can. It's just it's hard when everyone's talking at the same time, but that's okay. I mean, last time we had the owl, which was, you know, focusing on the person speaking, but that's fine. Um, quick question. Do we, under audio, do we have access to audible? podcasts and things? Um, we do not. 
Okay. I don't think Amazon has a library um, subscription, which would be Audible, but we do have our audiobooks in in OverDrive. Mm -hmm. um, right. And some in and some in Hoopla. Um, but we don't have Audible. Okay. Um, okay, so it's this time. All right, so um, these are our adult statistics specifically, um, and we are at um, about 34,000 books circulated, which is our standard, um, a little higher than our standard, so we feel good about that. This year, I was just really looking towards getting back to normal and I was pleasantly surprised. So we're doing better than normal in really all of our departments. Um, I know I'm gonna see that, so I'm gonna see if I can explain. I don't really know why this number is so high for the library things and museum passes for 2009. So I will look into that. Um, it's just, it's, uh, it's a huge outlier. So it doesn't really make any sense. Um, and I have to look into why why that is. It couldn't possibly be that we circulated that many museum passes, which is about um, 3,700. <laughs> that was in 2009. 2009, yeah. Nobody's, years, nobody's yeah. gonna look back that far. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a survey too, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, and then, so the big thing that I wanna note from this whole review of our errors report is our uh, children's circulation numbers, um, not only have they doubled from last year, but I think they're the highest that at least we've seen in the past eight years that I've looked back at. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. by a large margin. So Sharon Moody um, rocked it all last yeah. year. I know she, you know, she created some new collections. She was very focused on displays, which we're going to talk about next. Um, she attributes displays to being a huge part of her success, um, but also it's just that she's wonderful too. So it's all the tactics, but also just sharing herself. So um, I just want to make sure there's no of that in like a nice yes. hooray for Sharon. So her statistics, she circulated over 70,000 items last year, oh, just in that one apartment, which is huge. Because that's like in the elections, they have found out the more you display your your particular candidate, the more votes he's going to get. Right, right. Yeah. It's it's so, that it's that appeal. Yeah. Filters so, right down to yeah. the library. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And NYA has done kind of a level level start for a lot of years now. So um, they've gone back to where they were before, and we're happy about that. And um, we'll see what happens moving forward. This is always a problem. It's always in my way. Okay, so back over my report. So I said that we were going to talk a little bit about display. So um, the circulation staff in particular has been very interested in creating displays. And they're interested to the, to the degree now that they're working with Gail and they have plans through the summer of what all their displays are going to be. Um, working closely with Gail as well, but um, another one of those um, camaraderie teamwork things that are happening here that I'm really excited about the historical knowledge and, and some of that new energy as well. Um, and so we are hoping to have a, um, to purchase a formal display table. Um, we'd like to have it, this is laminate. We would like to have it in our cherry color um, that we have throughout the building, but it's oval. Um, this is the, actually the only one that I found was oval and it's appealing to me because it's, um, it's infinite, if you will, and so the displays are um, are kind of can be more cohesive. Whereas when there's sides, I feel like sometimes people feel like maybe there's a new topic on a new side, um, and we can do that a little bit here with a with an oval, but we can also just have one topic. And um, I also just think it's easier to walk around as well and just feels better than having point pointed um, edges. Um, so it's quite a bit of money and so, and it's furniture and it's going to change the look of our, our walk-in. So I just wanted to discuss um, and see what people thought. Where are you thinking of putting it? So we would like to put it, there's a large um, table that we have now that we're using for display space. We'd like to use that in addition to this mm -hmm. and have this kind of more uh, closer to the entry. So we have okay. like a really open entrance 
and I want to keep it open, but I'd like to try to add another table in there through the side of the case. Uh, yeah, it's the main interest. Yeah. yeah. Megan, can so you click on the on the cherries just so we see what it looks like with books on it? It doesn't um, go over the um, website. Um, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> doesn't move over, Elaine, the way that most websites, we would expect most websites to do. Mm -hmm. And I can't see how much it's, it's um, about, it's about $700. And so in my report, I just want to note that that does not include tax and shipping. $700 is not bad if that's a, a nice piece of wood. It's, well, it's a nice piece of laminate. <laughs> yeah, it's laminate. Oh, okay. Okay. So I think we, I think it's awesome, and I loved it. And I've seen this in other libraries and other states, and you know, like in brand new buildings. And it just to me, it's just you know, feels like a bookstore. And it just again, it invites interaction. And it, um, I think it's neat look at you need to turn not N E A T as well as neat looking. Um, and I, I guess I was just. Just curious about the color only because I feel like this light color really lets the books kind of pop. Um, and again, cherry laminate. I don't know if it's going to be like pretending to look like cherry, dark cherry wood, or is it going to look like, I, I don't know. I get, so maybe if I, I love the idea, I'm just questioning the color. Yeah. And there was options on another website to do black or white. But I didn't. I, I didn't quite think that would fit into our our mold. Like the, wood. the circulation desk is a lighter wood too, right? No, no it's circulation is like this. Too like this. Yeah. Okay. We have something like this at Buttonwood in the light wood. If you want to come up and take a look. Oh um, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know that it's. There'll be a few people that will notice that it's lighter. But in the big picture, we're taking it's going to be covered by books. Right, right. Yeah. It's supposed to be like well, on just one quick question on this. So, so it's a display. Mm -hmm. What's different about this than a bookstore is, is inventory, right? It's like the depth of inventory. Mm -hmm. So if I want that book, I just take it and go. And then do someone else that comes, someone has to come in and just kind of update the book. And Somebody we're about to replace with something else. Something yeah. Else. yeah. Yeah, so that's something the CERC staff does regularly now as part of their rotation. Yeah. Um, the other thing that happens is when we make a display of something, all the books that are related, we change the location in the catalog, and it's more for us, but we change it to display. So as books come back, it pops up and it says this belongs in the display section, and we know mm -hmm. that it goes back on. So it's like a nice way to make sure that everybody's on the same page of what, what's supposed to be going in that space. So we have actually two tables in the front. For display one thematic mm -hmm. such as we have now and then this one would be more maybe contemporary or whatever yeah so we're thinking one is just like that uh more formal or like a non-fiction theme because we are trying to push our non-fiction collection and that you know we have titles in non-fiction that you know are relevant and so mm -hmm. check them out and so we want to have one of non-fiction and then one of the our perception is that it's more fun so maybe something that's going on around town that's a fun topic. Maybe the farmer's market's coming out in the next month and we do all of our books about fruits and veggies and mm -hmm. farmer's markets and things like that. So that's kind of the plan is to have one that's a little bit more serious um, and one that's a little bit more local. Mm -hmm. so. How often are you hoping to change it over? Uh, we do them monthly. Um, I think it's a great idea. I don't think it's a lot of money. And I hope that we need a pass. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Uh, should we, do we, should we vote? All in favor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick outdoor space update. <clears throat> Um, so we're coming to the final uh, final throws, if you will, of the design. There's a few more tweaks that we'd like to make. And other than that, we're moving to our um, possible funding. Uh, the CLT met with the, I'm sorry, I missed it. 
development committee where they um, are starting to talk about their their fundraising strategy because we'd like to be able to present that to the CPC. Um, I spoke to one of their members on Friday just to talk a little bit about getting some advice on what they'd like to see in an application and if they feel as though we're at a point where we could go to special town meeting and um, and talk well talk to them and then hopefully have a be for a special town meeting. Um, and he felt as though we were ready to rock and to it certainly um, fell under um, their jurisdiction. That's something that they would like to do, that they have plenty of funding in place and, um, and encouraged us to submit an application. So that's kind of where we are there. Um, and um, they suggested that maybe we go for a third of what we're of the total contract might be a good, a good number. So we, we could do that or we could strategize something else, but that was just a good um, indicator of what we could do. And so other than that, just wanted to lift up some of the small, well, not small, but other projects that are coming along. Um, so I'm working on a draft of the strategic plan after our last meeting and um, chatting with the staff members about their thoughts um, and, and working with our strategic plan committee to talk some of those things out. Um, I need to finish up the state required um, financial report, which is due in the middle of October. And we are closing up the um, library union negotiations. And that happens usually every three years, although last year they did a one year contract and to kind of get through the rest of COVID so that the town could see what their finances look like. So we're just finishing up um, that. And that's been a great, great, easy experience. Okay. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've been really busy um, when it's supposed to be kind of laid back in the summer. It's been really busy. <laughs> you know, it's through COVID, it was just shifting operations all the time, but I yeah. never felt like we were doing anything to move forward. It was just to continue to find ways to, to do service. Job. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. It was uh, yeah. it was interesting. Okay. So thank you. Good. Um, okay. So uh, the bills from when it's not with us, right? So yeah. Um, did everybody look through the bills? I did look through the bills online. I did as well. Um, do we need a description? Do we read the everybody read the accounting report? You actually probably need the bills to sign. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I was getting up to. But do we feel like we need any discussion? Is there, there any questions? Are there questions? Nothing shouted out at me. Yeah. All right. Unless I missed. Did, did I miss something? Did it? It I looks pretty straightforward to me. Yeah. Yeah. No surprises. Um, all right. Well, why don't we go ahead and vote while Megan is getting that? Um, so, do I hear a motion to approve the bills? So, so moved. Second. <laughs> All right, we do a roll call for the, for the bills. Um, Alex Viteri? Yes. Mary Lou Lawrence? Yes. Sarah Pease? Yes. Megan Brinsey? Yes. Brooke Jewell? Yes. Elaine Breslow? Aye. Aye. And Catherine Harvey? Yes. So, bills carry. And so we just pass around and sign them. And the CLT has not had a meeting except for the development committee that you just described. So, there's nothing to report from the CLT. And I don't really have anything to report. We haven't met this month, have we? I don't think we the have. Friends? Yeah. Yeah. The friends? Yeah. Oh, the friends. I missed the friends meeting also and have not gotten a recap. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wasn't here last month, but in July, I wasn't. And you were sick. And there was some discussion that maybe Brooke and I could share taking over. The, the, Did I get the discuss? Friends? Last month, I, 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 see it again. I, I don't think we did. And the thing that, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to stay to stay on as the liaison. I do, the only issue is that it always seems that the first Thursday of the month at 930 is when I have to be somewhere that is not this room. So I keep missing the meetings, you know, and then I but I get I'm talking to Barbara frequently and in touch with Beth. So I mean, when I miss the meetings, I can also just sort of get the download and, you know, we can just sort of see how it goes for another four okay. months. So why don't we just, we'll just keep it the way it is for now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to at least take this up also. Yeah, I guess that's true. If I know I can't make a meeting, then I can, you know, I'll just email one of you and see okay. if you can pop yeah. in. Okay. So yeah, that would be good. Then we'd have coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Great, but uh, so all to say though, I did not get the, the recap of Thursday's meeting. So I cannot give you a report on the frenzy then. So I don't know, do you, do you wanna share anything? You I'll share a little bit. So I think um, I had given my presentation for our uh, budget request. Mm -hmm. Um, and they haven't, you know, they're going to talk about it and we're going to vote on it next meeting. And then I believe it's brought to the trustees and that's voted on too. Um, but, or yeah, whatever that process is, but, <laughs> um, but, uh, so we did ask for a significant amount of money more than last year. Um, and so that was a topic of discussion. Uh, we're just seeing, we want to provide level service, um, and we're just seeing a huge increase in, in pricing of folks coming to do programming. They don't want to come for $75 anymore, the cost of gas, the cost of their time to come here and do that. So um, I think that was the big conversation. And I think that um, they talked a lot about then, you know, how to kind of up the ante on the annual appeal. Um, Meg Wheeler had some really great ideas about, you know, just reaching out to maybe 25 people that we know that are regular donors and they regularly give us you know, $50 every year for the last 10 years. And so maybe on their appeal letter, we like a handwritten note or a follow-up note that says, you know, we appreciate your $50 so much. You know, things are becoming more expensive. Would you consider giving $100 this year? Mm -hmm. And so just a, a, a small amount of time, just a targeted amount of people, just asking for a little bit more from them to see if maybe that would help us out a little. So that was one of the things that they talked about. They also are talking about moving away from PayPal over to something that's called like, I don't get it wrong, and it's silly to begin with. So now I'm really, it's something about butter, being butter, get butter, <laughs> get butter. I was hoping you knew brought No. Um, <laughs> it's another fundraising tool and it's called don't get butter. That. And the great thing about it is when you pledge money, you have the option to use Venmo or your PayPal account okay. or whatever account that you use huh. to navigate the internet and, and pay money. So um, I liked that um, people had an option. So I like that. that was another That's conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. PayPal's been so clunky. It's just, it's been really difficult clunky for everybody. to use. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, and we so desperately wanted to implement Venmo and then hit yes. that dead end. Oh, so maybe this will frustrating. Help yeah, because you have to have a dedicated cell phone for, for Venmo. There's no other way to do it. So mm -hmm. then it was like, all right, we're going to like lease a cell phone just for that. Then we're, what do we, you know, it was just, yeah, we couldn't do it. So that sounds great. I mean, Meg is a terrific resource for anything like that. Yeah. So what's, what's your donor penetration right now? Number of people? Mm -hmm. I don't know. For the friends, um, I'm gonna say <laughs> it's probably in the neighborhood of 200 households. Yeah, 200 households. More play. I mean, yeah, and it is it's the same people every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, yeah. do, we, do we write a note to them? Yes, the that's how I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Know. <laughs> In the letter, so that folks who prefer to scan a quick QR and, and give the donation and throw the letter in the trash mm -hmm. to declutter and then on one of those people, you know, that would give them the option. Because otherwise, if you have to write a check, some folks just put it in a pile and then the pile gets thrown out eventually because the to do pile got too large. Yeah. So that was an option too. Does the annual appeal, does it, the letter go out to everyone in town or just library? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. It's kind of an autopilot, you know, they, you know, look at the letter, do minor updates and edits, mm -hmm. and then it, it goes out mm -hmm. pretty much the same way every year. What's the matter? Uh, it goes like, can I say October, around October, because we're usually doing the thank you notes around Christmas time. What's the, uh, what's the, Conventional wisdom on that is it October is a good time because if you're already starting to think of end of year debt giving, what, what, what I or? think I don't know what the original intent was. Sarah might have an idea about that, but I I think now it's just it's tradition. Yes, Definitely. and it's expected. It's just sort of an annual cycle. You know, the the, the patrons who who are giving regularly, you know, they see it, they see the envelope, they know right right away what it is. They write the check, and you know. And what's the year over year on the on the Sorry, let me have to go. Penetration is 208,000 households. 
but the year over year donors, so the people who are ongoing every year, mm -hmm. is what the, the percentage of that 200 households? I mean, probably like 60 percent. 60 percent. I would say maybe maybe more, maybe more like 70 or 75. Yeah. Okay. Right? So then, the, so then the question is, we can go out and ask for more money of the people who are already giving us money, or we can go find a home group of people who ask for money. Right. Those are the two options. Yeah. Or both. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. So, so more money from the people already. And, it, and the thing is too that I think um, at least the last you know, five to seven years or so, it's sort of been, we've been taking in about what we're spending annually. And we had, I mean, now, as you said, things are getting more expensive. And also the appeal was down last year a little bit. We had a, a, an uptick, like pretty good. I mean, it was like a difference of, I want to say like $5,000 in 2020, which was sort of a surprise jump. And then it sort of went back to, to pre-COVID levels last year. But what I was going to say is, um, what we were taking in was pretty close to what we were spending. And when, then we had almost two years worth of reserve in the bank. So it, there wasn't a great incentive to expand because the budget that was coming in every year was pretty close to what we were collecting. And so it was all just sort of working. And also, but I also noticed that CLT is working on fundraising too. So that needs to be coordinated. You, you, we don't want CLT to send out a letter in November right. if the friends send out a letter. And Plus, I don't know what division. they when they say fundraising. I don't know if that just means sending a letter, or if it means putting on a big I think museum that, production. Right, and it's I I don't think that that is resolved. I think that that's sort of um, probably a relatively new discussion. And it's really, I think, mostly driven by the outdoor space project, because I don't think that otherwise the CLT would be looking to doing it, do any fundraising. I think it's really, I mean, is that your yeah. impression also? I, I don't think CLT would be doing any fundraising, but for the outdoor project. That's for the outdoor project. Yes. But again, it's the, the underpinning of that whole debate is we're coming right, right back to the same issue, the, same the people. confusion of, and also mm -hmm. the confusion among the different bodies of the library. Exactly. And making sure that people understand what it is that they're giving to, right. which is like our ongoing you know, yeah. challenge. Well, we did a, um, a little um, card that explains things. Um, what does it have to do? I have a copy of it. Oh, well, you do? Beautiful. Yeah. 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 You know, maybe maybe at some point, I, I like, I love those pie charts, and maybe at some point on the website, um, not to make more work for Megan, but you know, we do some kind of graphic that shows like, do you know where your money goes, you know, for the library? And you know, what is you know, what what does CLT focus on? What do friends, what does the friends focus on? And then, you know, just something that in a nutshell encapsulates and explains that there are different entities and different branches, so to speak, um, pun intended. Um, to to the library and you know and, and that way it gives you know and we love and appreciate all of it but you know this is you might like to know you know if you have preferences as to where to make donations or whatever or how how it works yeah What's the average? Sorry, what's the average donation? Term? I think the average is probably 50, 50. Um, but then we have you know a good collection of people who give a hundred, and then a small number of people who routinely give more than that, which is usually like 200 or 250. And do we get any kind of place of recognition or levels of recognition or anything? That we get? No, you get a thank you note. Can I get a brick out here on the side of the patio? <laughs> the you, get a, you get a window cling if you give a hundred dollars or more. A window cling? Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not judging. I'm not. I, 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 not that, came out, that came off the wrong way. Off the wrong way. No, no, we're no, all it's, it's interesting it. because because we've been doing it so many years. It's nice to have new a new vision or a new you know. Yeah, uh, and I, I did. I'm only asking questions out of curiosity, not because I I have any yeah. ideas beyond the fact that I just think that there might be an opportunity for new audiences, and I think there. Are, people who are in here regularly participating in some of the programs are the ones we should be going after, right? Because if you're just up there listening to the radio every day, that's who you are, and you're like, oh, I take advantage of this radio station every day, and now asking me for money. 
Mm-hmm. And after they beat you up a couple times, you file an yeah. 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 And um, because I should do it, because I do it every year, because I utilize this space. So I feel like that that's the that to me is the model that's in my head. It's nothing more than a kind of public TV model or public radio model. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if there's something more to it. I, I do think this idea of you know the, the time now, if we're really going to go and, and make a, a new vision for what the library stands for is also a nice handle for kind of starting a conversation about it. And then, you know, maybe we do some, some partnerships with businesses that kind of show some interest and show some new excitement. And then we go back and we hit them again with, you know, with a real, with a new ask. So not that it's an overtime kind of a thing, but um, but it doesn't pay the bills today. And so you have to figure that out too. But I think the problem with the businesses is that they're hit by so many other charity programs. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. In a small town, they just get hit by everywhere. No, I agree. I think that that's why I think that the businesses have to get something out of it. But if they'd be willing to contribute in order to get, I don't know what. I'm just saying, like the partnerships, though, where you work together on a certain situation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Where all of a sudden they get a chance to, I mean, because if it's a restaurant, you get a sample okay. of your food or you get a sample of whatever you're, whatever it is that you're right. selling. Uh, um, that there's some sort of a, a connection that, that makes sense that is not just us asking them to give us, you know, support us. It's more about how can we support you? Kind of like a spotlight for the kids and conversation. Yeah. Yes, yes, right. Or, yes. or like one of the restaurants, we could have some kind of event there, you know, where mm-hmm. we could meet down there for the book group could be meeting at yeah. one of those places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Or we can yeah. offer to, you know, put their logo on. Right. But then if we, you do it for one, why choose one when there are so many? That's because there's opportunities for everybody. I think there's opportunities for everybody. The, the, the idea of, I think it, we have to spread, I think it's about spreading the love, right? So today it's about the uh, tomorrow, it's about the red line, and the day after that it's about mm-hmm. it's else, stop. the good sport, um, uh, boards, you know, all of them. So I think it's, I, I think there's something there, but, um, but I'm interested in this, like, so two and a half percent is a good, like, with that number of the country is two and a half percent, which is a really good breath milk piece. Yeah, and that's what it is. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean that it's it, yeah. So that's people are responding. Yeah. Are responding. No, they are. I it. mean, you know, query whether you know what percentage of that it uh, is made up of people <laughs> who have been giving for decades. You know, and if we're not expanding, then you know, is it you know a waste to send it to the other? Ninety-seven and a half percent. Yeah. Do you guys post the names anywhere? People that contribute, the, like they do at CEF, or it's like the levels, like. Yeah. Uh, I think it mm-hmm. goes out it goes with the way. letter. I think it does. It, does it, what's on there? It's po- it used to be posted kind of on the wall as you walk. So those are the big, big. Those big are the no, 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 not no. It just oh. like it was. It was a oh, oh. typed-in thing. Oh. Donors to the friends. Yeah. It was kind of over on the right. I've checked on the way out. If it's there, and you just got. No level of what you gave, but if you were uh, you just donor, were your noted as a donor. Business. I think that there's this. I think it's it goes out with the letter. Okay. I believe. I think so. Do we need to put it in the memo? Like like I the, the, the Sandy Beach Association. Right. Sandy. Right. They don't see. Right. They don't, they don't, see, they don't see that anymore. Do they? I think they do. We don't have the memo. Well, the mariners gone. Oh, the mariners. Yeah. Sandy Beach posted somewhere. So it's such an impersonal paper for what's on the right. Yeah. It could go out in the newsletter that everybody gets that in town. Yeah. But again, that's just going to the library, you know. It, no, the well, that's true. The newsletter goes everybody. to everybody. Yeah. Well, there's well, only conflict there, though, is there? A conflict with it going out in the newsletter, so maybe. Newsletters from the library, yeah. and we're thinking could be. donors for technically don't yeah. have friends. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. I think that's right. I think so I think it's a, maybe a little. I thought about that. Yeah, you know, I don't think you could do that. Friends, but I'm yeah. all about fuzzy lines. But well, yeah, nice yeah, no, so we used to do Sunday author talks. We had um, Dean and Hamilton basically supported us. Mm-hmm. Sponsor, yeah. And after a while, there were other people who came and said, "Well, why can't they I?" They wanted to. Yeah. yeah, they wanted to, and so rather, I mean, it just. And then fortunately, we changed hands, and it and, and the, the 
whole program got tired, right? It, you know, this all happened simultaneously, which was good because otherwise we were getting ourselves into a little. Actually, Tom had Tom was ready to give it up, but you know, it, it died a natural death. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was some of the most exciting years of my life, though. I thought those people that came were just so wonderful. Didn't yeah, you? Well, it was great. It was yeah. funny. I was I was cleaning our bookshelf the other day, and there were all the books from the lot. I know. From the that was like really good. Um, but it, it was a lot of work. No one can do that. She anymore. was fun. There you go. You did it. Yeah. I couldn't do it now. Nobody could. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody would want to. Yeah. yeah. Well, but and that's the kind of thing. Other... I mean, that was really good advertising. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it showed a side of them that people didn't see. Usually, mm -hmm. you know, they were looked upon as greedy real estate people. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Is this for public right? consumption? <laughs> no, no. But that's, you know, a business. <laughs> But now, I mean, it did show a sign of them that was um, intellectual. Greedy in general. <laughs> I mean, community based. Because they are, you know, they, they give to everything in town, really. Right. So and it um, was it was very helpful. So it was just one more generous gift from them that we so were very grateful So many people given to them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, okay, so that's the friends. <laughs> um, I want actually, I said I didn't have anything um, on the Dorsey report, but that's that's wrong. It just came back to me that I sat with Nina uh, Welford and okay. did an interview for the anchor, which is trying to step into the void. So mentioning the, the Mariner is what, what jogged my memory. Um, so they're trying to, they're, it's an online newspaper essentially. And they, um, and I, we talked, we talked about the, the friends and CLT confusion. And we talked about the strategic plan and we talked about, we did not talk about the outdoor space. I teased the outdoor space because we wanted to do that as a separate feature. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the fact that Megan's idea that um, the way we teased it was that, um, we had sent out a survey as part of the strategic plan and that we had gotten a lot of feedback from patients and people who responded to the survey asking for outdoor space and that we had heard that demand. So that was sort of, you know, I think a strategic way of getting the attention of people who responded and then also putting it in people's heads that not only that we are responsive, but that, you know, um, that might be something that they hadn't thought about before, but, you know, um, anyway, so we talked about that. Um, and I just sort of gave her sort of a basic primer on the library and um, we walked around and she had never been in the periodicals room and um, we sat over here where we cleared up this, what used to be stacks where you know, we have the tables and chairs now. And, um, so it was kind of an eye opener for her. And so I'm hoping that that comes through in the, in the piece that she writes. And she said that they are just eager for any and all content from, from anyone in the community and that they would love to have a you know, regular feature for the library and anything that we want to send them, they are happy to put online for us. Yeah. So, and I do think that they are getting some traction. I think that people are watching, you know, and I think that that, you know, if we are to address one of the things that, that you brought up in the strategic plan of possibly trying to encourage people to bring a community discourse away from Facebook and into a community forum, perhaps the library being the right venue for that, that that might be a place where we could start encouraging that that move and certainly might be a way that we could promote you know all any kind of programming but that kind of programming in particular because i think that a lot of the same people who might be checking one four three you know are, are also mm -hmm. subscribing to the anchor or they're you know checking they're on the email list or whatever so i think that you know we might <laughs> sort of reach the audience we're going forward that particular um initiative yeah. that way so, so that was great news, and she was terrific. And like I said, they're very, very eager for for whatever we can because offer. Because that's going to be younger, I would think. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. Yeah, but yeah. but then again, I mean, and I the reason why I say that I think there's a lot of overlap with um, the Facebook consumers, the ones who are on the one four three page, is just because I be, well they're posting their stories to one four three. 
So people who are checking 143 are seeing their stories and maybe clicking through and then maybe subscribing to the newsletter. So I think that there's a pretty close relationship there. So I think a lot of the same eyeballs are on both, both places. So that could be. Um, Didn't we get the anchor as a, as a journal or a magazine? That was Life on the Rocks, which has just scroll. recently first like changed scroll. hands, it's and now it's been rebranded. Yes, now it's called Scroll. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the anchor is something completely. Different. It's completely different. It's entirely online. Could Stroll do a um, spotlight on the library, or should we be an advertisement? I mean, they they could do that. We, we've done it. We we did we did it when it was Life on the Rocks, and they came and they photographed us, and they photographed the library, and they did a nice one pager, and it, and it was nice. But I just I think that it's I'm not sure. I mean, yes, it's worth doing for sure, but I don't know if it's really the right venue for communicating messages. It's more, it would just be like, a, here's the library. Here are some pretty pictures of the library. And here are all the insurance brokers and real estate firms in town. You know, so I'm not sure. And I don't mean that as a knock. I'm sure it's, it's, a, it's a new venture. And I'm sure it's going to be a terrific asset to the community and all those things. But um, it's, I think it's different from what we might be able to accomplish with the anchor. Yeah. I mean, it'd be good, certainly, for saturation. You know, to get out as many ways as we can. Um, so, so that was I did have that on my agenda. <laughs> so, um, okay. Anything else? Any no business? No. no. All good. All okay. right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. We Second. adjourn. Second. All right. Second. We're adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Bye, Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye.